just descended into a massive school of these black tip sharks. This is scaring the crap out of me, to be honest. If there's a big shark coming, you have to stand your ground. You can never, ever swim away. I must admit, it's a bit difficult to uh, project confidence when you're in the midst of shitting your dry suit. Scott and I have been planning this trip for a year. Our plan is to dive the world. Our goal is simple. We want to go where not many people seem to go. I just want Planet Earth to put on the best possible show she can. <laughs> Travel's been my school. It's been my church. It's all I know. And I've only been exploring 30% of the map. I spent a lot of my life exploring the oceans. There's thousands of creatures there that people have never seen before. People don't even know exist. We've really got a couple of hundred feet beneath the surface, which is our playground for the next year. I think people who know him would say, you're absolutely crazy. Yes! Oh! <laughs> yes! Oh! Ah! Do not attempt what Ellis is doing, ever. <laughs> Steve's working on the camera, on the underwater housing, Anna with lighting, and Ellis and I are... I'm just getting drunk. Since it's a really nice morning, we're actually going to try our hand at getting some shark breaching. Oh! find out that only 1% of the oceans have ever been explored. I want to understand what we've got. I want to see with my own eyes what we stand to lose. It's the garbage that's really unfortunate. And all of these amazing creatures having to live amongst it. We'll be hitting up some spots that have only recently been discovered. Millions of shipwrecks that are scattered all over the planet. The stories that they can tell, they lie beneath the waves. You're looking at history right in front of you. That's got some history to it. I feel like we're discovering the Titanic all over again. Oh. You've got to make sure that you aren't seduced by the depth itself, because it's the very depth that will kill you. The second you can't see what's below you, that's where you almost get into a panic situation. We can't see a damn thing. There's sharks in the water, sharks in the darkness. A lot of current going on right now. Guys, where are you? Let's get out of here. Get the f away from that shipwreck. Hang on, hang on. Hurry up, hurry up, mate. Just hold on, mate, hold on. We gotta come up in the middle of the ocean and they'll never find us. can't help thinking how close I came today to losing a good mate. I don't really know what I would have done. To be honest, I don't know what any of us would have done. So one more fire walk for us. What? Show us how it's us. Uh-oh. I'll do it if you do. <laughs> I can see the blisters go. Oh, does that hurt? <laughs> With all the diving and all the experiences, every time that we get in the water, we're learning more and more about how much we don't know about the oceans. If you love to be thrilled and wowed by nature, you owe it to yourself to try this. I believe adventure is food for the mind, body, and soul. For me, adventure is about learning and growing. It's about facing, facing your fears and making your own discoveries at whatever level they may be. 
I've been fortunate enough to be part of a very talented group of uh, documentary filmmakers. And what you just saw was part of our journey. We set out on a, a mission to discover our aquatic world. And in the process, we get a chance to see parts of our planet that not many people get a chance to see. And we had some in incredible experiences. I'd like to share just one of those experiences with you. We were diving in an area of Raja, Am uh, sorry, an area of Indonesia uh, called Raja Ampat, part of the Coral Triangle. And we were diving on a reef filming manta rays where they would come in and be cleaned by the reef fish. And initially, when we started filming there, these manta rays were very shy. They didn't want to come close to us. But as we kept on going back each day and filming them, they got closer and closer and braver and braver. And at one stage, I had this manta ray swim over the top of me. And as it did, I, I turned on my back to look up underneath it just to see how amazing it was. It was maybe one and a half meters above me. And I was probably a meter off the, off the sand. And as it swam over top of me, a funny thing happened. As I breathed out, the bubbles trailed upwards and started tickling its belly. And as it did, it enjoyed the sensation. It started coming down on top of me. And as it, <laughs> further it came down, I started fitting backwards, trying to get away from it, until my tank actually hit the bottom of the sand and I could go no further. At this point, I would like to point out that it was a, it was a mummy manta ray, not a daddy manta ray. The truth is I don't really know, but uh, it's my story, so I get to, I get to decide. <laughs> and here I am on the bottom of the sea floor, and this giant manta ray settles on me as delicately as a feather, and I start tickling her belly. And an incredible experience. I mean, these things grow six or seven metres across and can weigh over one and a quarter tonnes. Could have squashed me like a sandfly with one flip of its wing, but it didn't. And you know, it's moments like these that are, for me, the essence of adventure. And that's a, that's a memory I'm going to take with me forever. So I've skipped over a few of my notes here, so I've got to catch up now. It's been my, my dream to, to dive and to go and have these wild adventures all around the world since I was this little kid. And I was first inspired by, a you know, when I was a little kid, I was first inspired by watching uh, Jacques Cousteau and David Attenborough and people like that. And they used to travel around the world having these amazing experiences. And you see, I believe that when we're all young, we, we all have these dreams and aspirations. But also what I believe is as we get older and the, the clutter and the strain of life comes on, we, we sometimes start to file these dreams away in little boxes and put them away in deep recesses of our minds. And, and we make our to make ourselves feel better, we tell ourselves excuses. We tell ourselves we don't have time. We tell ourselves we're too old, we're too young. We have others to look after in our life. But we don't always tell ourselves the truth. And many times, what I truly believe, the main thing that stands between us and our dreams is fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of failure. And sometimes, fear of success itself. But fear comes in many forms. You see, there's many types of fear. There's real fear and perceived fear. Real fear is where our lives are very much in physical danger. And perceived fear is, is when our subconscious mind just tells us that our lives are in danger. But at a subconscious level, our mind doesn't understand the difference. My mind doesn't understand the fear of, the, the difference between the fear of standing up here on stage like this, or the fear of being eaten by a carnivorous animal. To some of you standing up here, it might be worse. <laughs> now, it just so happens I'm familiar with fear. I've spent a great part of my life facing fear. 
and pushing my own boundaries. As a kid, I was this very shy, introverted little boy. I remember even, you know, getting on the school bus and walking up the aisle. I was terrified of everyone looking at me. And I remember just walking up and I would just choose the very first seat that would come along and just sit down and stare at my feet, just try to hide, try to blend in. I didn't like the feeling of being afraid, but I didn't know what to do about it. And it took me a while to to figure this out, but eventually I started using the fear itself as motivation to actually do the things that I'm afraid of. You see, after you've done them, you're not as afraid anymore. You see, there's, there's two ways we can react. We can turn and we can run. We can hide. Or we can charge forward directly at the very fear itself. And for every fear that I face, it makes me more stronger and resilient to face the next. And for every challenge that we overcome, it forms a stepping stone to bigger and better opportunities in the future. And so in the process, I've developed this little system to con continue forward despite my fear. You see, how I understand it is we all have this different level of comfort. I like to think of it as this invisible line and as we approach this, this line, you know, we start feeling fear. And as we get, you know, closer and closer to this line, we start to experience more and more of that sensation until finally we come to this, this point, this line. And at that point, you know, this is normally where we turn back. But we never learn anything by turning back. And so it's at this point that I force myself to stop and I ask myself one question. And I ask myself, what's the worst thing that can happen? <laughs> Sometimes that's bad. <laughs> and then I really try to imagine what is the worst thing that can happen. But not only that, can I accept the consequences? And usually from that moment on that you step over that line into the unknown is when I've personally learnt some of the most valuable and powerful lessons of my life. Many years ago, I used to be a hunter. I used to go off into the hills and the mountains on the weekends and take a pack of dogs and a rifle and more often than not return with a wild pig or a deer across my back and I did this for 14 years. I even wrote a book about it. And being passionate about the outdoors, I also started chasing other things. I started chasing mountaintops. And I remember the very first mountain that I ever climbed. My friend and I had spent three days getting up onto the summit ridge of this mountain. We got up to the top, and this summit ridge was about six inches wide. And I remember throwing my leg over, looking up at the summit about 100 meters above us, up this heinously steep and corniced spur. I don't think I'd ever been more terrified in my entire life. I remember just sitting there, belaying my friend up from below. And on my left was a 2,000 foot drop. And on my right was a 2,500 foot drop. I don't think I'd ever been so frightened. I was so frightened, I almost threw up. And I was so frightened, I was actually frozen with fear. You see, I'd always been afraid of heights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you're thinking, all right? <laughs> but you know, that was what made me want to climb mountains. I didn't like being afraid of heights. 
And so at some point, I, I realized that I was so afraid, I didn't actually think that I could climb down again. You see, it's always harder going down than up. And so I had to think of a way how I could overcome my fear. just so that I could function. And the way that I had to do that was I had to accept the worst thing that could happen. And at that day, I really had to accept my own mortality or the possibility of it. I really had to accept that if I died today, it was going to be okay. And we never did make it up to the summit. We down climbed and over the rest of the day, At the end of the day, we started packing up our camp. And we heard this voice coming up from higher up the mountain. And it was another climber that had been climbing the same peak that day, and he was yelling out for help. We climbed up to him, and his friend had fallen. And it wasn't until the next day, when we were looking for his friend, we realized that he had died. And it was really only after this expedition that I got back and I really understood the real true meaning of fear and facing your own mortality. You see, fear is not a pleasant feeling. It's not meant to be. It's scary. It's designed to keep us alive. But the world we live in today is very different from the one that we evolved in. And these days, fear is not just about survival. But what I truly believe is that fear holds us back from experiencing, learning, and achieving so many things. And so as we step over this this line into the unknown, we expose ourselves to risk, but at the same time, we open ourselves to learning. And what I believe is that we learn more in these moments than at any other times in our life. You see, adventure is about pitting yourself against challenge, and in challenge we grow. And it's this exact same principle that can be overlaid like a blueprint onto many facets of life. This world that we live in is this massive playground And this world, we can make as big or as small as we want. For me, adventure is my university. But adventure is not just restricted to the physical sense. Adventure can be spiritual, emotional, intellectual. Because adventure is as much an internal journey as an external journey. And so in order to go out and discover new horizons, Sorry, (laughs) I'll repeat that. So, to discover new horizons, sorry, we don't need to discover new horizons in order to make new discoveries. (laughs) Adventure doesn't need to be something massive. We don't need to go out and climb Mount Everest in order to be adventurous. Adventure can simply be trying something new. So maybe adventure to you is rekindling a dream that you've had stored away for a long time. Maybe it's discovering something about yourself. Maybe it's simply facing a fear. So I dare you to choose an adventure, new or old. Make a challenge and take the first step. Face your fears head on and dare to dream. Thank you.